Welcome back. So in the last video I created a sugar wash and I've been fermenting that with ethanol in the whole, uh, fermenting that with um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae in the hope to make some ethanol. Now as a product of that reaction we should see ethanol being produced and carbon dioxide. Now an effective way to test for carbon dioxide gas is um, using lime water. Now lime water, luckily I have a chemistry set at my house and it contains some uh, calcium carbonate uh, sorry calcium hydroxide now what we need to do is suspend calcium hydroxide in water now it won't go into solution um, but we basically shake it up, we agitate it in the solution and then we leave it for 24 hours to settle and after that we can sieve it out and then we will have some lime water. Lime water is clear but when you bubble carbon dioxide through it it will turn the solution cloudy. So if our yeast are still fermenting we can do a quick test to see if there's carbon dioxide gas present. Okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to fill our uh, container up with just ordinary water leaving a bit of headspace and then we're going to put in five or six teaspoons of calcium hydroxide probably went a little bit heavy on the first one there now I'm mindful that I don't want to waste too much of this and it is worth saying make sure calcium hydroxide is corrosive make sure you wear adequate protection when you are mixing it so we're going to seal this vessel now make sure it's proper properly sealed which it's not so before we start shaking we need to make sure that it's properly sealed now we've, we're doing kitchen chemistry one thing I don't actually have is access to all laboratory glassware one thing I do have is a baby who eats an awful lot of baby food so luckily I have an abundance of baby food jars which have been saved. These are brilliant because they seal closed and they will hold whatever you put in it inside nice and tight. Now you can see that that mixture has turned quite milky. If we leave that overnight it should sediment. The, the goal is to leave it for 24 hours. Now something which I didn't mention before which I should have mentioned and um, I would imagine there is a lab manager somewhere that is screaming at me right now if you are going to make solutions like this up particularly if that you're going to be using baby food bottles it is imperative it is imperative that you label your bottles of solution because otherwise you will have no idea what is inside it so what we're going to do is we're going to write on here um, calcium hydroxide plus water 29th of March uh, 2020 and then we know exactly what is in that uh, tub when we come back to it so as you can see that um, it's definitely cloudy and hopefully when we come back to it tomorrow it should have settled right okay so we've left our uh, calcium hydroxide um, overnight and as you can probably make out I'm hoping you can it's now sedimented at the bottom of the, uh, the jar what we need to do is we need to decamp the supernatant I'm going to do this with a syringe because I haven't actually got any filter paper lying about we're going to draw it off with a syringe trying not to disturb the, um, the sediment at the bottom and then we're going to filter it through a 5 micron filter that I have there now the idea here is to try and minimise the amount of disturbance within this bottle crack it, put that lid on tight remember it is corrosive so please be careful with it and we're going to decant our lime water off now we may well have to do a couple of passes here but the purpose is to try and not disturb 
the sediment at the bottom if we can help it. So that's as much as I can get in there. We're going to take that up. We're going to fasten on our filter. Now if you're doing this at home, if you've managed to get hold of some calcium hydroxide, you can do this with normal filter paper. Unfortunately, I don't have any here. You could do it with a coffee filter as well. But unfortunately, it's just not something that I have in the house at the minute. And as you can see, we're getting clear wine water coming through. I'm going to take that off and then we can refill the syringe once again we're trying to avoid the sediment at the bottom as much as is reasonably practical I'm going to pick it up so I can see it clearer because I want to try and avoid disturbing that sediment if I can help it okay then we're going to attach our filter again Fasten that on and filter that into our jar. So this has provided us with a nice roughly 120 mil batch of uh, lime water. Lime water we can use to test for the presence of carbon dioxide which I'm going to use it with some yeast to show people how that actually works okay I think that's the most I can get off there without disturbing the sediment so I'm now going to fasten the filter on for the final time and decant the last amount through the syringe And that there is the process completed. So fasten the lids on, make sure they're all nice and tight. That's not right. And as we've mentioned in the past, always, always, that currently looks like water. If somebody was to pick that up, they, they could potentially drink it. And we want to make sure we minimise any potential hazards to anybody else make sure you label it up yeah so we're going to put today's date which is the 30th of the 3rd 2020 and we're going to label it lime water and we're going to write corrosive on the front of the bottle now it goes without saying if you've got something that's corrosive you need to store it out of the way of any children small family members that could get over it get hold of it yeah it looks like water it doesn't have a particularly pungent smell and if somebody who didn't know what that was drink it hazards could happen so please be mindful as with all the experiments we do you look after yourself and you keep yourself safe when you're experimenting so thank you very much for watching that is how you prefer prepare lime water from calcium hydroxide and water